डियर प्यूर यूरोलॉजी फेसबुक व्यूअर्स गुड इवनिंग वन एंड ऑल टूडे टॉपिक इज इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज इट्स रिलेटेड टू दी कॉम्प्लीकेशन ऑफ ए सर्जरी पी सी एन एल एज यू ऑल नो पी सी एन एल सर्जरी इन इंडिया इज प्रिडामिनेटली डन बाई सी एम बेस्ड फ्लोरोस्कोपी बेस्ड एंड अल्ट्रासाउंड इज ऑल्सो एज ए मेजर रोल पर्टिकुलरली टू असेस द विजरा अराउंड द किडनी so the colon is one of the important structure which will be always lying close to the kidney prone pcnl lot of people do very rarely they encounter colonic injuries whereas supine pcnl few people do and many feel that in supine pcnl because front of the abdomen is there when you are puncturing chances of uh, colonic and intestine injury will be more people will say like that ultimately ct scan has come techniques have come so did discuss about this today speaker is dr sumit kumar uh dr sumit kumar is uh, uh, i will briefly introduce about uh, him and then we will hand over the program to uh him so today session at pure urology colonic injury in pcnl prevention and management he is assistant director and consultant urologist at surya super specialty hospital shahin bang jharkhand travel he has done travel fellowship in usikan olympus 2016 by basu third prize in video presentation recently at annual conference of urolithiasis section 2023 he has eight publications in national and international journals several presentation at various national state forums area of interest endo urology and laparoscopic surgery the ultimate idea of giving to sumit is that he practices in a place where uh, uh, the uh, it's not like a metro city or advanced city it is his own home ground where he has to practice with caution because this type of complications uh, can lead to not only patient morbidity but lot of mental stress to the surgeon so with his experience i requested him Uh, that uh, share your uh, uh, preventive manner measures for uh, colonic injuries so with this uh, i will hand over the program to sumit sumit thank you for joining the program uh, uh, thank you sir thank you sir first of all i must congratulate you sir and thank you also sir for creating such nice platform where we can learn so much from the stalwarts of urology not only from india but also from abroad sir and also i'm grateful to you for giving me this opportunity to share my views on colonic injury in pcnl very well sir i share my screen sir yes sir yeah visible and it is full okay right sir so sir my topic is colonic injury in pcnl i do prone pcnl so uh, the incidence of colonic injury is rare incidence is 0.3 to 0.5% it is considered to be a serious complication based on clavin ito classification it is staged as stage 4a incidence is similar in supine and prone pcnl majority are retroperitoneal injuries it's more common in left sided pcnl coming to the my case we had encountered where i perforated uh, a colon 46 year old thin built female presented with left flank pain since 3 months ct urography showed left renal pelvic calculus colon was found lying anterolateral to the kidney patient underwent left prone pcnl rgp was done in prone position it showed descending colon shadow overlapping all calices of left kidney mid pole posterior calicial puncture was planned puncture was done by hybrid technique 18 gauge initial puncture needle was advanced with jerky movements due to which colonic indentation could not be appreciated tract dilatation was performed over alkene dilators amplat sheet of 18 french was placed mini pcnl was performed stones were fragmented with pneumatic lithoclast probe and extracted with the help of forceps and 
also by whirlpool effect. Remaining stone fragments in pelvis were further fragmented and removed. Complete stone clearance was obtained. Digestant was placed. Zebra guide wire was placed in the PCS as a safety guide wire over which amplage sheet was withdrawn under vision. We suddenly entered colon. Colonic perforation was detected. We can appreciate the pinkish mucosa of colon. Glide wire was placed in colon. Zebra guide wire in PCS and termo guide wire in colon can be appreciated. Amplage sheath was then advanced into the colon. And zebra guide wire was properly parked in colon. Colostomy tube was placed. So uh, with this, we come to the anatomy. Anterior perineal space contains ascending and descending colons, duodenal loop, and pancreas. Ascending colon extends from ileocolic valve to right colic flexor. Hepatic colic flexor lies anterior to inferior portion of right kidney. Descending colon extends from left colic flexor to level of ileic rest. Left colic flexor lies anterolateral to left kidney. In this article on segmental colonic length and mobility, it was found that two thirds of the subjects had a mobile portion of the ascending colon and nearly one third had a mobile portion of descending colon. Conclusion drawn was that significant proportions of colons with mobility of ascending and descending segments prompts revision of the traditional anatomic teaching of these segments as fixed and retroperitoneal. Retroperitoneal colon are more common in the area of inferior poles of the kidneys. On CT imaging, incidence is 10% in prone position and 1.9% in supine position. In this article by Mahishwari et al., he found that there was no case of retinal colon in a review of 1200 CT scans. The conclusion drawn was that retinal colon is an acquired anomaly, the causes being the obstruction of a long standing hydronephrosis, rapid weight loss, leading to reduction of peridinal fat, and post operative adhesions. Coming to risk factors of colonic injury, patient related factors include advanced age, female, thin built, prior intestinal surgery, institutional bowel, renal anomalies like kyphoscoliosis, harsh kidney, small and mobile kidneys. In prone PCNL, if calicial entry is lateral to the posterior axial line, in supine PCNL, if calicial entry is anterior to the posterior axial line. Coming to diagnosis, Fecal material can be found in the operative field. Withdrawal of amplage sheath under vision is confirmatory. Post-operatively, diarrhea, hematochesia, or passage of gas or fecal material through the nephrostomy tube can be found. Patient may present with features of peritonitis. Intraoperative or post-operative nephrostogram may reveal contrast within the colon. Post-operative CT scan is recommended where findings may include extraluminal air or contrast, pericolonic inflammation, fluid collections due to leakage or abscess formation, free air in abdominal cavity, and localized bowel dilatation. Coming to management, conservative management is usually successful. In this article by Ostak Edge, it was found that most important in colon injury is the timing of diagnosis. The success rate of conservative therapy is 86% if the diagnosis is made perioperatively or postoperatively 
before the removal of nephrostomy tube. The rate of success decreases by half down to 40% if the diagnosis is delayed. The separation of nephrocolic communication is the first step of management. Broad spectrum antibiotic therapy helps to prevent sepsis. Folic catheterization should be done to lower urinary pressure. Adequate bowel rest should be given. Regular anal dilatation, laxatives, and enema help to lower anal pressure. After post op day 5 to 7, colostogram or retrograde pilogram usually confirms closure of nephrocolic fistulous tract. Thereafter, colostomy is withdrawn into retroperitoneum to serve as drain. After post op day 7 to 10, barium enema usually demonstrates closure of colon. Thereafter, retroperitoneal drain is removed. I must thank Chanmohan sir for giving me this uh, uh, picture where we can see the colostomy tube in situ and feculent matter coming out of the tube. Surgical exploration is rarely needed with resection and anastomosis or diversion colostomy in cases of intraperitoneal colonic injury, peritonitis, sepsis, and failure of conservative management. Coming to the prevention of colonic injury, in patients who are at high risk of retrorenal colon, CT, must be, CT can be, should be done in a prone position preoperatively. This allows for appropriate alterations in technique to be made, such as the use of ultrasound or CT guidance. This video has been provided by Chanmohan sir, and we can appreciate the colon indentation on fluoroscopy. In selected patients and experienced hands, ultrasound guided PCNL can be an alternative option for the treatment of patients with large renal stones who have retrodenal colon in cross sectional imaging. Again, let's see, uh, Chanmohan sir, we have this video on colonic shadow that appears on ultrasound guided renal axis. In this article, on CT scan, retrodenal colon was found as an incidental finding. Patient underwent under CT guided nephrostomy tube placement by intervention radiologist, and thereafter the patient underwent successful percutaneous nephrostomy. Conclusion drawn was that gastrointestinal injuries could be avoided by using computer tomography guided access in high risk patients. To conclude, identification of retrorenal colon by preoperative imaging demands extra caution during renal access. Alternative techniques with ultrasound guided access and CT guided access are useful. Successful conservative management is usually possible if colon injury in PCNL is diagnosed intraoperatively or early in postoperative period. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So uh, you made it uh, brief. Uh, let us, uh, we have time. We will discuss uh, one by one point. Uh, sure. Share the knowledge. Uh, basically, uh, in, have you tried supine PCL? No. No, sir. No. See, my opinion is in uh, supine PCL, as you said, the colon, when you tilt even 10 degrees, will fall away. But still, people don't try supine PCNL. They have feeling that you can injure the colon easily. That is correct. You can injure if you are not following certain uh, precautions. It can happen with anybody. The case which I have given to you is uh, my fourth case of supine PCNL where I did not have much idea. The posterior axillary line is not a Lakshmana Rekha. It is an arbitrary line drawn 
uh, onto the iliac crest from the posterior axillary line. So don't depend on that line. That is my advice. Uh, because you are not doing supine PCL, I am sharing from my point of view. Uh, supine PCL because I am doing more regularly. Second, in prone PCL, normally, you know, we go a little lateral to the para rectal paraspinal region below the 12th rib. Yes, sir. There, uh, column will not come easily, isn't it? Yes, sir. Whereas in uh, uh, supine, if any anteriorly you have chance to go, whereas in prone you cannot go anteriorly because you are on the back side. Correct, sir. Whereas in supine you can go anteriorly chasing the stone, then you can injure the column. Yes, sir. I personally want to share after three and a half years of uh, continuous supine PCL, keep 12th rib tip also as the, uh, as the important guide, not the posterior axial line alone. If, yes. you are, if you are just below the 12th rib, posterior to it, one or two finger grips. Very rare that uh, you will injure the column. Number two point, uh, normally we advise to uh, come in uh, more posterior, then come anterior. Same principle as a junior, you should apply in supine PCRL. Try to go three finger bits below the tip of the uh, 12th rib. I mean posteriorly. You are understanding now. Just below the 12th of the rib, three finger bits posteriorly, you move the kidney, you move the calyx. If he is going to enter, you are 100% uh, safe, not the posterior axial line alone. So this is one important point. Now I want to ask you, is it uh, easy to see colon every time when you do puncture? Normally, we don't we don't look seriously. What is no, it? Sir. sir, not every time, sir. Not always easy, sir. Not always easy. Colonic shadow may not be seen always in prone PCNL. Uh, not necessary, it should be seen. If sir. you are very intelligent. If you will concentrate on the stone and calyx, not the colon. Correct, sir. So if you are extra intelligent, you can see while going. Otherwise, if you go straight, uh, you don't appreciate the indentation. So normally, you... sir, oh, in yes. our practice, uh, 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 as a beginner, what we have been taught to be move with jerky movements so that uh, uh, we go and hit the calyx straight and it becomes easy. But with that jerky movements, uh, when you, we move through and through, we can't appreciate the colonic indentation. But uh, when we suspect the injury, we, when we move inside, at that time only if we uh, move the needle and then we can feel the indentation and the movement of the, of the colonic shadow, sir. Yeah. Either during uh, passing of the needle at the tip of the colon or after the needle is passed, if you move, if colon is moving, uh, it is uh, possible. But... Uh, in, in preventive measures, this is not a very important preventive measure that on table while passing the needle you will appreciate. What we personally feel is more medial you are, more posterior calyx in prone PCNL, less the colonic injury. Yes, sir. Correct. Very simple. Yes, uh, sir. There is no need to go read the CT, rule out the retrorenal column. Uh, if the Colon is uh, like, uh, if you draw a line horizontally in the midsection axial cut of the uh, kidney, if the colon is above that, very rarely you will injure the colon. Thanks. You cut the kidney half, uh, exactly half in axial cut. If the colon is above the half cut, very rare. As you said correctly, colon, when comes to the lower pole, it is more uh, in relation with the kidney. Yes, sir. So lower polar punctures, uh, uh, colonic injury is more. Because as you go up, uh, liver and uh, spleen will come and colon will divert towards the midline, anterior. Right. Yes, sir. So when you are going for lower pole puncture, better go little medially, not too laterally, uh, and uh, assess the CT. While puncturing, it is very difficult to assess. But if you have knowledge, use it. Keep an eye on the colon and uh, enter the calyx. After that, you cannot do anything. Dilatation goes on. 
99% of the times we don't know that we are going through the colon. In your case, what you have shown, it is very good case. I don't know why you have come out with the nephroscope into the colon. It is looking like it is looking not good for me to see the fecal matter on the table. I might have Sir. done nephrostogram. I might have withdrawn and kept in the colon for one or two days. But you have gone with scope into the colon. What made you uh, think that you come out uh, with, uh, normally you come out uh, seeing everything? Sir, it's my regular practice that I withdraw um, to need connection. Uh, hello, yes, I'm audible, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. In normally when you come out, see, there are two ways. One is putting nephrostomy, another is not putting nephrostomy. If you are not putting nephrostomy, you can slowly come out seeing and watching. But 90% you will come out so fast, but you will not be able to identify colon. How did you identify in this case? Sir, uh, the, as I have shown, sir, they, uh, in, during RGP, I could feel the colonic shadow overlapping the calluses. So I had a fear in my mind. One. Very good. Second, second sir, it's my protocol that I place a safety guide wire and then I always come out with a nephroscope and have that shade under vision. And so this is a new point for the audience juniors. There is no, there is no uh, big deal. You come while watching slowly, come out keeping the guide wire is a very, very, very good idea. There is Thank no harm in that. In fact, uh, in supine PCNL, I inject contrast and comes out. Sir. No chance if my eyes does not recognize the colon, the contrast will spread in the colon and delineate that. So you have identified the mucosa and went into the colon. I will identify through the this thing. And in fact, you place two guide wires, one in PCN, one in colon. Oh my God, that much uh, idea we may not get. I might have put uh, an PCN and uh, slowly withdraw PCNL every day so that it comes to colon, then controlled fistula, then just outside the colon, then immediately colon will close because our mini perk and perk are only maximum 8 mm, 6 mm sizes. They will retroperitoneally easily heal with, without any obstruction. Only problem is uh, uh, if you if you don't recognize and if the stent comes there or if you don't recognize the fecal matter coming out the nephrostomy and then you discharge collection in the subcutaneous tissue in the in the uh, muscle plane can occur leading to abscess and uh, uh, abscess and uh, fever yes sir now i want to ask you we should discuss when will we open for example Contrast CT, you have done oral contrast CT. Contrast is clearly seen leaking in the retroperitoneum. You don't have nephrostomy. You have not recognized on the table. You have not recognized in the post-op. You got fever and tenderness in the local region. Then you will go for CT. If CT shows uh, some leak from the colon, especially oral contrast, if you give, when should we... When should we operate and uh, do closure of the, uh, it's not easy. In a small places, calling GA surgeon, doing colostomy, doing suturing, all this is not easy to convince the patient. We will be under tremendous stress. So what I feel is uh, make a so, cruciate incision. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. Brain, what do you say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we make a cruciate incision and, and at a sound guided, we can place a drainage tube um, up to that point where the collection is there. And uh, we can observe for a few days with high antibiotics. And even if that fails, then we have to plan for uh, uh, colostomy, uh, diversion, colostomy or something. Yeah, diversion, uh, if you are, if you are, if you are uh, alone, divert. If you have GA surgeon, if the contamination is not more, it is entire thing is retroperitoneal and the uh, colon is healthy, you can excise and suture, but you will have fear. Yes, have fear of leak again yes, and fistula. So uh, there are various, some people say you open, you trim the edges, close it and put a malicot catheter and bring out through yes. the wound so yes, that 
uh, you keep for a long time so that it becomes a control fistula. Control fistula. These are all easy in thin patients. In thick patients, it is not easy. A lot of tissue will be there between the colon and the abdominal wall, posterior abdominal wall, and then it can lead to. And one more point I wanted to mention supine PCL regarding colonic injury. This is my favorite point I wanted to I wanted to make a record that in supine PCL the puncture is horizontal, not like uh, up and down. In in prone you go down, so you go through the skin, uh, muscles, and then to the kidney. Colon may come in between. Yes. Whereas in supine we go horizontally. Above colon will be there, below kidney will be there. If you follow principles of horizontally, either you will hit the colon or you will hit the kidney. Mm -hmm. You cannot hit both. Right. You are understanding my point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Unless you change the direction up and down, which we don't recommend in supine. Supine, if the kidney is not moving, it is posterior, come out, make a nick posterior and then insert so that all punctures are horizontal on the broadest line. That's what we saw the, the video which you shared, sir. Yes. Uh, which I showed. It, that was that was we could appreciate on that, sir. So in, in supine piece and colonic injury comes when you know when you go anterior abdominal wall and try to come down to the kidney mm -hmm. like this. That is very, very, very wrong. Because the entire abdomen is in front of you. Can you puncture directly at the umbilicus and come to the kidney? No. Can you come lateral to the umbilicus? No. Can you come still lateral? No. So you can't come from top to bottom in supine PCL. You have to go horizontally so that you hit either kidney or you hit the colon. Right. So this is one point. And one more thing, in ectopic kidneys, do you have experience in ectopic kidneys puncturing the, because Ectopic kidneys are surrounded by the colon, horseshoe kidney. Yes, sir. But they are more posteriorly, anteriorly rotated. Sir, I have done a lap assisted PCL in for ectopic. Okay, that is so, correct. Yes, because sir. if you put laparoscopy, needle can be easily identified. Yes, sir. And in ectopic kidney as well as mal rotated kidney, one small suggestion is that entire calyces will be medial. Hmm. So they will be superficial but they will be medial. So if you go medially and get the calyx in prone, you're very good. Yes, Usually uh, the calyx will be posterior and you can use bullseye, you can use uh, triangle radiation, but stay medial. Yes, but sir. what is medial, uh, what is lateral, how will you know? See, rib we see and the para spinal region we see, paraspinal rib junction is called renal uh, angle. Yes, sir. And uh, below the rib, one line is there. These two, paraspinal region and the rib region in between, if you stay, colonic injury is very rare. Yes, sir. Unless retrorenal colony is present. The way you have shown, the colonic shadow itself is medial, both in CT as well as uh, uh, CM, then you should be very careful. I had one case where hernia operation was there. I was doing uh, supine. Large hernia operation is there and the entire colon is structured uh, to the most posterior aspect and hernia is there now, recurrence. In that, PCL has to be done. What I have done is laparoscopy I have done. I have removed the, all the column. Yes, sir. Then CM I used and punctured. Where will it uh, hit? It cannot hit. I mobilized the entire column dropped. Yes, sir. Now I aimed for the calyx. This is the advantage of supine that you can put ports in the same position and tilt the column and do it. But in prone, you cannot do that. No, we can't do that. Sir. You can't do that. So yes, prone, naturally, uh, the middle calyx and upper calyx are medial, whereas lower calyx, you have to be careful. And if you take precaution not going laterally, not going laterally, it is better. Yes, sir. Do you have any other experience uh, in your place, PCL complication, where you have to sweat out, other than colonic injury? Um, uh, two of my patients required angioembolization, sir. Uh, what was the reason? Uh, sir, uh, uh, puncture was good, sir. 
पंक्चर वाज गुड पेशेंट वाज फाइन इन अ आई डू मोस्ट ऑफ माय बिजनेस आर ट्यूबलेस देयर वाज नो इंट्रोप ब्लीड नो पोस्ट ऑफ ब्लीड पेशेंट वेंट बैक होम आफ्टर वन वीक पेशेंट विद केम फॉर विद रिटेंशन ऑफ यूरिन ड्यू टू क्लॉट्स सो आई हैड टू डू क्लॉट इवैक्यूएशन एंड पेशेंट वाज अगेन फाइन आई केप्ट हिम ऑन रेस्ट फॉर अ फ्यू डेज again patient went back and again he came with the bleed so this time i did not take any chance i referred him to a higher center and uh, uh, patient underwent angiomyelization for that okay so any clot formation is a not good sign after you discharge the patient and come back yes sir the second thing after clot evacuation if one more time clot forms even if the hemoglobin is not falling please do not wait yes sir these two are important messages you have got right, even i feel strongly if the clots are formed in the bladder evacuate after that if again bleeding comes directly go for angio yes sir but before clot evacuation second time i will go for angio because clots will be forming again and again waste time waste yes. anesthesia waste everything waste and uh, what about the other case i have few questions from sandeep padigiri If uh, CM does not show any gas shadow, no ultrasound available. If CT shows slightly posterior colon but uh, above renal hilum with few cuts available, how to make sure uh, intrap we have not gone through the colon? As he uh, is asking question that there is doubt. Mm -hmm. CT is a, a, every CT every place is not two mm cuts. They jump. Yes, sir. Sometimes you don't get any stone. Looks like one centi one centimeter. It will be four centimeters. Correct, sir. It depends on the mission, and if he has not taken axial cuts properly, we may miss. Sir, we may contact the radiologist for that. Yeah, yeah. Every time we cannot do that. Now in private right. practice, correct, you will sir. Be doing, you will depend on RGP. Mm -hmm. See, Upper. CT. You will see. You will confirm the stone. But if you if you overlook, he is saying that. Uh, CT shows uh, slightly posterior column. Once you say slightly posterior column, you have to go more medial. Ah, medial function. You have to do nephrostogram. You have to visualize the tract while coming out. You yes. have to put the guide wire. You have to do nephrostogram and visualize at the end of it. There is no other way you can. The same step only which I have done. Way, only way you can avoid colonic injury in prone and PCRL is ultrasound, ultrasound, ultrasound. But one should have ultrasound. one should have pndt up, uh, uh, approval one should have a good ultrasound like bk one should be able to identify the colon very well in a routine ultrasounds uh, if the colon is not uh, identified very well you are not confident that's why ultrasound guided punctures are not easy if it's hydronephrosis there anybody can puncture non hydronephrotic uh, this thing it's not easy to identify the viscera in ultrasound so easily but we have to adapt uh, by regularly doing it so for his answer i feel you have to be more medial 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 yes sir puncture the medial posterior calyx just get out of it after removing the stone he also asked a question in case presented uh, through uh, colon is antero lateral uh, what could be the cause for the colonic injury if it is if a medial puncture could it be uh, uh, prevented yes correct see if you go more lateral you will puncture more more lateral more colonic puncture which in prone you cannot go that much lateral your brain will be telling why are you going so lateral whereas yeah. supine you can go because supine primary area is lateral so that's the problem supine is uh, colon is not uh, nearer to kidney you are going nearer to the colon colon right surgery is going nearer to the colon and blaming the supine pcrl technique you you get chance to go in prone you did you should, will not get the chance do you agree or not in yes prone, sir you don't see so often colonic injury and abhinash has written one question hi sir clinically how to suspect colonic injury versus paralytic ileus secondary to fluid extravasation in post op period this is a very tough question for example you have not put the nephrostomy and colonic injury has happened definitely patient will have tenderness next day morning do you agree or not yes sir i do agree sir he will have fever his counts will be raised but can you guarantee say that because of this he has colonic injury no we don't suspect na 
we do it we come out next day severe pain and uh, this thing, we think that it is because of the wound yes, but sir. ELC will be raised fever will be there how will you identify only 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 suspicion if suspicion is not there what will you do after 2 3 days patient will develop more local tenderness and paralytic in that case oral contrast ct is a mandatory mandatory ah, so oral contrast ct whenever in doubt is mandatory so your unfortunateness on that day that patient will develop tenderness uh, 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 tenderness swelling fever raised tlc and not related to urine Yes, sir. You, first, first will be sir clinical evaluation. Second will be, uh, will be the blood tests, and third will be radiological, sir. Yes. Yeah. If yes. the nephrostomy is there, still we don't know whether we can identify because if you do nephrostogram, the by the side of the nephrostomy, contrast will come and go into the column. Uh -huh. So if that happens, then you can see the ostations of the colon, and uh, any person can identify that vertical column will be there. If that vertical column is there, then you it is nobody can do anything. It is then what we do is slowly inject contrast with the drop, inject contrast with the so you keep in column first. Yes, sir. Column blindly. What you have done is uh, too much uh, uh, scientific. Uh, uh, one guide where zebra, one guide where termo here. You have put one nephrostomy and one piece, one one into the column. Uh, no, sir. No nephrostomy tube. It was only yeah. just colostomy tube. Means you are disconnecting the kidney. Yes, and sir. you are depending on the colostomy tract. Right, sir. For it to heal. Yes, sir. In that case, the another principle which I feel is if you are expecting conservative management in colonic injury retroperitoneally, please give a big incision cruciate at the nephrostomy entry and fix the nephrostomy away from it. Big cruciate. And put your finger and enlarge that area so that if any fecal matter, let it come out. Yes, sir. If the fecal matter comes out, patient will not die. If you don't, you try to seal everything, put a dressing, don't cover everything, and you don't bother about the give only mirupenum, mirupenum, patient will deteriorate and hypotension will come. And by the time you take in, he will have paralytic ileus and hypotension. Yes. So if at all you have doubt of the colon, contrast enhances CT with oral contrast. If you still have doubt that the colon is leaking at the level of the kidney point, open the cruciate incision, put finger, withdraw every one one centimeter every day, Foley's catheter. If you see the fecal matter, it is a good thing. If you see the fecal matter, it is a good thing. You have damaged it. Fecal matter has come out of the wound, safe for the patient. Sir. If you if you, the fecal matter doesn't come out and accumulate inside in the gutter or somewhere, oh, that is a disaster. And disaster, sir. That is a disaster. So, message is very clear. Uh, as you said, in post uh, prone PCL, you will be medially puncturing the kidney. Take 12th rib, try to be a little medial to 12th rib. And if you have suspicion in ultra uh, uh, CT, try to be more, more medial. You remember recently we have discussion in our WhatsApp groups that paraspinal punctures are safer. Yes, sir. We see ectopic kidney, malrotated kidney. There will be window. Posterior part of the kidney, paraspinal, just paraspinal vertically down into the uh, calyx. Nothing will happen because entire kidney back is facing towards the spine. Do you agree or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there is no harm, like in arshu kidney. What is there in arshu kidney? Entire back is facing you. You go here and there and the puncture. Renal hilum will not come. The colon will not come. Nobody will come so medially. So, but this is not in all cases when the kidney is normally laterally, normal rotation because the calyx will be lateral. When the calyx are lateral, sometimes you cannot go so medially and to act, especially in the triangularization method, uh, you try to go laterally. What do you say? Sir, if you go more lateral, the chance of injury will be more. Yes. So, it's a calculated decision. Ultrasound only can tell in the... In and the, one more thing, sir. One more thing. Yeah. We should all be, always be uh, uh, with knowing the various techniques. Uh, hybrid technique, bullseye technique, gradual yes. descent. We should be all be oriented to the, this technique, sir. And then only we can be flexibly uh, make a good puncture. Yes, yes. See, if there is a colon medially, if the bullseye technique is there, it is more medial. Yes, sir. 
in bullseye is more medial, more straight to the calyx. Whereas in uh, in uh, triangulation, you try to take slightly lateral. Lateral. Sorry. That slightly lateral may hit uh, the column. So that is more in uh, prone, but uh, uh, literature says supine is less. But I still feel after doing so many supine PCL, because there is no landmark, because posterior axillary line is not a permanent line written on this thing, it is more chances that uh, colon is injured, even though colon is more anterior. You all you chase the colon in supine PCL, not the colon. Whereas in prone, it is really unfortunate if the colon is injured. Then we have to be vigilant on nephrostogram or under vision coming out is a very good idea. Pass the guideway, come under vision. If suddenly mucosa is seen, something you inject contrast and confirm, then you put a tube into that uh, uh, column and then open the skin widely so that if any pericatheter fecal matter comes, be happy. Daily, if you do dressings, after that you put colostomy over the cut tube. And every week you withdraw. In one month, we had two cases. Very nicely they will heal. No antibiotic needed, nothing. That is all because the colonic uh, fecal matter has to come out if it is injured in the retroperitoneum. Throw your nephrostomy tract, especially if it is tender and boggy, give the incision. Give the incision subcutaneous tissue, nothing will happen. It will save you and patient will not die. Hypotension all should not happen in our hands. This is actually uh, more important than sometimes it happens when you are doing thousands of uh, uh, PCNLs. It can happen with anybody. Majority of us are not keeping nephrostomy. And in, if you don't keep nephrostomy, if you send next day only everything go, after two days, three days, patient will come back with fever, pain, uh, then you should not neglect. Don't think it is UTI. Especially when patient says tenderness, severe tenderness, 100% we have to go for imaging and then prove. So I think anything we, are, we have to cover? Mm. I think this is crisp. Okay, I think. Yes, sir. So, uh, good that uh, the idea is uh, that uh, uh, all you youngsters working at the periphery is not easy. I am at Hyderabad where next to my door, Anjo is there. Next to me, the gastrointestinal, my close friend is there. You people who are doing in districts and uh, uh, big towns, the real all the urologists are going to periphery and practicing these these uh, experiences from us who are working in periphery is very useful. So you, you you need to have more guts. You need to have more knowledge. You need to be more careful with patient attendance. You need to be avoiding these altogether to have good name and practice best. So thank you and all the best for you and uh, nice presentation, Chris. Thank you, sir.